gift of gab I would like to speak to you about today, though, is gab as an acronym for goals, attitudes, behavior. Goals, attitudes, behavior. And how if you adopt and adapt this concept of goals, attitudes, and behavior, it will provide you with a number of tips, tricks, and techniques that will help you on your Toastmasters journey. The gift of gab, goals, attitudes, behavior. So we're ready to rock? Yeah. We're ready to roll? Yeah. All right, well, bless my soul. Okay. <laughs> now, goals, attitudes, behavior. G is the first element, goals. Research I have done on successful businesses and on successful corporations and on successful people convinces me that one of the reasons why many of these people and organizations are successful is because they've got a clear goal and a clear vision as to what success will look like. A clear goal and a clear vision as to what success will look like. For some of you here in the audience, you might not su be surprised that me as an Irishman, I am a very keen consumer of a famous black drink. There are few things in life that give me greater pleasure than going to my local establishment, ordering my favorite beverage, waiting patiently for that drink to be poured, and then, before I take my first satisfying sip, as I watch this creamy head settle over this black drink, I'm getting thirsty here, I tell you. I often ponder why this drink has become so world famous. And as I'm sure each of you here will appreciate, I am, of course, speaking about Starbucks coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, have I misled you? <laughs> All right. All right. But the reason, though, why I speak about Starbucks is because of Howard Schultz, who is the driving force behind Starbucks. He didn't found the company, but he joined it very, very early in his history. And Howard Schultz, when he came to Chicago just over 20 years ago to introduce Starbucks to the Chicagoland area, the first place outside of Seattle, Howard Schultz was walking the streets of Chicago with a business colleague of his, and he extolled what I would call is a clear goal and a clear vision, the first element of the gift of gab. Clear goal, clear vision. Howard Schultz is walking the streets of Chicago with that business colleague, and he said to that business colleague, in five years' time, everyone on this street will be walking around with a Starbucks cup in their hand. In five years' time, everyone on this street will be walking around with a Starbucks cup in their hand. Now, Howard Schultz had that clear goal and that clear, clear vision just over 20 years ago, when hardly anyone in the Chicagoland area was aware of Starbucks when cash was so tight that he was not taking any salary out of the business, and he was actually sharing the hotel room with that business colleague of his. But Howard Schultz, though, had a clear goal and a clear vision as to what success would look like. He could see it, he could visualize it, he could imagine it. And it was that clear visualization, that clear imagination, that energized him, got him out of bed every morning, and helped him to build Starbucks to the amazing business that it is today. Today, there are over 18,000 Starbucks coffee shops around the world. There seems to be a coffee shop, a Starbucks coffee shop on every corner. And indeed, the Onion newspaper ran a headline some months ago that said, next Starbucks unit to be situated in restroom of Starbucks unit. <laughs> <laughs> That's how ubiquitous Starbucks has become. But it happened, though, because Howard Schultz had a clear goal and a clear vision. And Howard Schultz had that clear goal and that clear vision at a time in Starbucks history when it had barely completed its icebreaker. But what Star Howard Schultz managed to do, though, is he eventually has become what I would call as one of the most famous DTMs in the world. And by DTM, in this case, I mean dis distinguished taste maker. <laughs> but it happened because he had a clear goal and a clear vision as to what success would look like. For you in Toastmasters, or for you in your business life, the question for you is, do you have a clear goal and a clear vision as to what success will look like? Can you visualize, can you imagine what success will look like for you in your Toastmasters environment, or in your business, or in your personal environment? And if you can imagine what it will look like, you have a much better chance of being successful. One of the great things about Toastmasters is that Toastmasters is based on goals. You join Toastmasters, you want to get that competent communicator, so you've got 10 goals to achieve. And you, without realizing it, you actually have those goals very much identified for you. In a sense, there's a clear goal and a clear vision. 
So Toastmasters, to a great extent, actually does live the clear goal and clear vision element of the gift of gab. But how can you actually make it more relevant to yourself? And how can you create a great brand experience and a great meeting experience for yourself and for incoming guests and for new potential members? When it comes to, to goal, I think there's a couple of simple little things that you can do that will help to make you successful and make the club more successful as well. I presume each of you here have, uh, are working through some uh, manuals or are trying to get some uh, additional qualifications at the moment, yeah? Most of you are doing that. Would it be fair to say that sometimes you kind of wonder, what am I going to speak on next? Okay, almost unanimous approval there. There's one simple little tip that I can give you that I think will help you to improve your productivity. And let's assume that you're working through the uh, Competent Communicator Manual and your next speech is on vocal variety. And you have no idea what I'm going to talk about. So what you're not, you're not going to put, do the speech until you've got your speech written. What I suggest you do, a simple tip that will help improve your productivity, is you tell your Vice President of Education that I will do a speech on vocal variety in four weeks. And you're kind of saying, but Connor, I've nothing to speak on at the moment. I promise you that if you tell your Education VP you will speak in four weeks' time on vocal variety, you will craft that speech. Because what will happen is that as you're driving in the car or you're on transit or as you're walking, you will hear something or you will see something that will think of, make you think about vocal variety. And what you're actually doing is you're doing research almost as every single time of the, the day. And it happens because you've set yourself a clear goal that I'm going to speak on vocal variety in four weeks' time. If you're struggling with your productivity in Toastmasters, if you're struggling with your ability to craft a new speech, Flip it and put down the date you're going to speak, and I promise you, you'll find it easier to move through that manual. So that's one simple example of 